Ah, uh, yes. Back when the plot of Resident Evil games were simplistic and devotion to horror was the main entree. I'll remove two sins for the sweet and sour recipe. Why are you adding cinematic scenes that completely change the undertone? If you have nothing to bring harmony to the build, then just skip straight to the menu screen. A Midwestern town in America. Raccoon City. Complete sentences, fool. Do you speak them? A solitary island far off in the sea. Rockfort Island. I guess not. The game introduces three locations that make references to other Resident Evil games just to tie in an origin story. I must admit, this is impressive since this was among the first popular video game universes that featured multiple titles similar to what's happening with the Marvel movies. But the problem is Capcom would be wrong in assuming that the majority of their fans played the pile of trash known as Resident Evil Survivor. This is supposed to be a background riffraff. Yet this lady starts off her conversation with... Do you think so too? The incomplete sentence tradition has been passed on from narrator to minor character. These leeches are capable of eating through metal and glass, but are confined to certain rooms and corridors, thus establishing them as the Mardi Gras of our enemies. Marcus is deep in the cleftside in Raccoon Forest, yet will somehow zoom his way to the Umbrella Executive Training Center for the final showdown, because punctuality is his Achilles heel. Also, we're shown all bioorganisms on board the train perished, but instead of crash and burning like your first prom outing, the Eclipse Express will be silently brought to a dead halt two hours later, only to start up again to crash and burn elsewhere. Court order for transportation. 163 pounds? Have you seen how big this dude is? The heck out of here. Rebecca rotates 360 degrees, yet doesn't spot this train in plain sight until her Cinderella bird pointed her in the direction of the plot. Billy. You're with stars. Well, no offense, honey, but your kind doesn't seem to want me around, so I'm afraid our little chat time is over. Wait! You're under arrest! No thanks, dollface. I've already worn handcuffs. I could shoot, you know. She just let the dude who's under suspicion for murder and who held her at gunpoint pack his bags and depart. She doesn't even attempt to radio in. What sort of backwards protocol is this? Dick Droin just jumped eight foot high and with enough force to shatter a window. Good luck at the next Olympics. It's gonna be dangerous from here on in. Why don't we cooperate? Listen, little girl, if you haven't noticed, there's some pretty freaked out things on this train. And I, for one, want to get out of here. Billy leaves Rebecca only to come back five minutes later requesting a little girl's cooperation when all he needed to say was Shazam. I can handle this on my own. And don't call me little girl. How did Rebecca ever make it into stars with the interpersonal skills of an elementary school student? Excuse me, sir. Sir. <gasps> After encountering zombies on this train, our heroine is still much too dense to differentiate between common sense and imprudence. <laughs> Standing around gawking at something cliche, Billy opens fire, doesn't plug Rebecca, and then changes his name to Max Payne. Who is that guy? Are we sure that this is a guy? Because that's pretty clearly not a man's voice. The glass is at this elevation, yet Rebecca and Billy can see through the apparent frame of these windows. Uh. What's going on? Who's controlling the train? Hitting the high notes is all the power you need to energize a train engine. If you find anything, give me a call, alright? Walkie talkies have various frequencies. It'd be nice to be on the same page, wouldn't you say? Seriously, why would you ever do this on a moving train? It's raining out! What the f- H2O jump scare! Most of this train sequence has no background music. Just a pattering of rain, howling winds, and the thumping of the train. These nature sounds are almost akin to stress relieving sessions in psychiatric care. You would not survive a fight with a giant scorpion in such a confined space, whether you're Max Payne or Sam Worthington. As we know, this gold ring belongs on the conductor's briefcase. Why is it here as opposed to with the guy who needs it to open his briefcase? Also, this joker enjoys the convenience of hauling baggage for the sole purpose of containing an item less than a tenth of the size and weight. Honestly, he should have just stuck it up as- This does not make any sense. How was the T-Virus leaked? And why did it contaminate both the lab and the mansion, as well as a train almost three miles away? That's irrelevant. We must make sure no knowledge of this gets out. Destroy the train. You don't have a satellite gun until the fifth game, dude. What you're ordering is a lot harder than Eggs Benedict. Special Forces men with automatic rifles terminated more of these leeches than Billy, but leeches seem to be intimidated by rock-solid pecs. Why does Rebecca not question why Special Forces ops are on board the train? 
Billy may not know why, but as Rebecca is well aware, only her team was dispatched to investigate the situation. The train will either derail or crash. Where on this panel are you getting this information? Besides the windshield wipers that you seem to be staring at intently in the rolling credits, there is no clear indication. Or did Billy drink monorail operation juices while prowling around in the conductor's office? In order to use the emergency brakes, you must first finish your math test. They survived this. With a theme like this, I'd often wondered if Marcus moonlights as the Phantom of the Opera. <laughs> Ten years ago, Dr. Marcus was murdered by Umbrella. You helped them, didn't you? <laughs> and scene. There's nothing more to be said or done. He has prior plans to meet Christine at the opera. While most people agree this story is inferior to the Resident Evil remake, the composer Seiko Kubuchi still nails the atmosphere through the seriously creepy background music. Has no one considered that if you put two other objects of equal weight on both sides, this is an easy lock to bypass? Nope. Okay. <laughs> Where did this zombie chimp come from? Was he hiding up on the ceiling? Certainly this is not the same chimp we saw in the previous cutscene. Or do zombie chimps have access to the speed force? Possibly rabid and virus carrying chimp bites Rebecca with no altercations to her health. <laughs> what? I will follow my initial plan and lure the star's members into the mansion. Their superior combat training should make them perfect test subjects. <laughs> I must admit, even though I adore the Wesker impression given by DC Douglas, I really miss Richard Waugh's amazing original take on the character. <laughs> How are you readying for help when you're using both your arms to hang off the rebar? There is no way Billy should have been able to reach Rebecca in time. Even if I were to assume he ran the whole way and ignored all the enemies while omitting scene transitions from room to room, it would still take him at least two minutes to get there. Unless she's got gorilla grips, Rebecca is dead. Billy, I just need to know, did you kill 23 people? I'm not going to judge you. This is the greatest lie that storytelling is to ever trope. Judging is a part of human nature. Our unit was ordered to Africa to intervene in a civil war. In the end, only four of us survived. Only, there was no guerrilla hideout. The idiots in charge had us operating based on wrong information. But we couldn't just go back home empty-handed, oh no. Our leader ordered us to attack an innocent village. Get rid of them! Kill them all! Please, sir! Cease fire immediately! Shut up! There is no reason they didn't just execute Billy along with everyone else. As long as he's alive, he can speak against his squad. Apparently it's relatively simple to be convicted for treason. Rebecca misplaying the piano here is a seriously eloquent nod to her Moonlight Sonata debut in the Resident Evil remake, as she claims she requires practice to improve during her reunion with Chris. Let's talk about the item placement in this game. Key items are often in places that would be difficult for any person to reach, and not in the way that most people hide their stuff. Like if it was in a wall or underneath the cabinet, which this game does do, it's understandable. But what about the ring on the train, or the key in the animal storage facility, or the tablet on top of the pillar? If there's an emergency that requires you to have access to certain parts of the facility, you've created dangerous obstacles to bypass. Some of the best parts of the original games were journal or diary entries by various employees. They had a spectacular layer of immersion that only deepens the fear of the unknown in further segments. <laughs> Billy survives this. What is that? Rebecca doesn't recognize the creature that has a clear resemblance to the one from the containment unit she saw in the camera feed 10 minutes ago. Hey, it's this guy! I honestly forgot he was even in this game. If Billy survived this fall, it's quite likely the chimp did too, so where the hell is it? And don't say that chimpanzees can't swim because you'd be wrong. This situation makes no sense. If Billy was near drowning, how the hell did he get up on top of the platform, then pass out, and you know, not die? And he didn't even need CPR. What could have done this? They must have been used as test subjects in Marcus's research. 
He must have kept messing around with the mother virus. Billy? This is an example of cinematography where the end of the scene, the moment character development is about to happen. But I suppose it doesn't really matter since after this game we never hear from him again either. This thing somehow used the elevator and ended up in the sewers. This angle is not appropriate. Ten years ago. This accent is not appropriate. This deep throat is not appropriate. <laughs> I prefer the laugh from Devil May Cry 2. You know, this one. <laughs> At least I can appreciate how utterly hilarious it is. And for no adequately explored reason. Well, actually, there is a reason, and it's a rather good one, but obviously it's not stated here. <laughs> Rebecca and Billy are dead for the third freaking time. So the ending to this game takes place around dawn, yet the first game takes place at night, so I can only assume Rebecca was at the mansion until nightfall, or it took her until nightfall to cover this distance. Damn, you move slow, girl. Shazam! Shazam!